guys, Chris from Hockey Tutorial here, and today in this video we're going to be taking a look at five things that every single person should know before they pick up a pair of hockey skates. Whether you're picking up your first pair of skates, or you're replacing a pair, or even if you're an experienced player and you're just getting some new skates, this is going to have something that everyone can take away from it, so please make sure that you do check this out, regardless of your experience on the ice. Before we jump into the video, please make sure that you subscribe. A bunch of you guys that watch our videos aren't subscribed. If you want us to keep growing, keep making these videos, make sure that you subscribe because it really does help the channel grow, it helps bring more visibility to the channel, and of course before we jump in, please make sure you thumbs up because again, more visibility, more growth means more videos. So before we get in, subscribe and also give the video a thumbs up. I wanted to mention that if you watch this video, if you're thinking about buying a pair of skates or you know someone that is, make sure you suggest this video to them or share it with them because it will give them all of the core information that they need to be able to figure out what type of skates they need to get next. I will also mention that down below in the video description is going to be a bunch of videos that are linked to the five points that I'm going to be discussing in this video that will essentially go into much more detail, explain the different skate ranges, explain all of the different elements that I discuss in this video in much more detail. And if you watch the videos down below and this one, you will have all of the information that you need to be able to walk into a store or visit a website if you can't go to a physical hockey shop and make a decision about which skates you need to pick up and what size you need to be looking at. I can't stress this enough. Please make sure you watch the entire video and also the videos down below in the video description because they will give you as much insight as you need to be able to pick up a pair of skates because the number one question that I get emailed or I see in comments is, I'm this amount of weight, I'm this age, my foot shape or my foot size is this, which skates should I get next? And it's impossible for me to be able to answer that because answering that question requires a lot of dialogue. We have to go back and forth, I have to ask you questions, you need to give me more answers so we can suggest a pair of skates for you. This is turning into a bit of a series where if I see a question that is constantly being repeated in the comments and in my emails, I mean I literally get this email I'm gonna say six to seven times every single day of my life, what skates should I get next? I wanted to answer that in this video to hopefully help those people out. So make sure you watch all of this. And once you do, watch all the videos down below in the video description, and you'll know everything that you need to know to be able to at least make an informed decision about the next pair of skates that you need to pick up. Let's jump into the video. Now, of course, the way that I'm gonna be breaking this video down is with categories. You guys know how much I love categories. It makes things nice and easy to explain. Of course, hopefully nice and easy for you guys to understand as well. The first thing that we're gonna be looking at, which is probably the most important, is gonna be your fit and comfort inside the skates. From there, it's gonna be the stiffness, which is a point that is super, super important. Next up is gonna be the price. From there, it's gonna be the options amongst all of the different skate manufacturers that are out there because they have different ranges, they have different families, what does that all mean? And then lastly, is gonna be the blades or the runners and the importance of how that will affect your feel and performance on the ice. Now, of course, when we look at the first point, which is the fit and comfort of the skate, easily the most important. You don't want a pair of skates that's gonna be too tight and you don't want a pair of skates that's gonna be too loose, have unwanted space inside the skate, making your time on the ice horrible. When you're looking at fit, if it's the first time you're picking up a pair of skates, that's a little bit more tricky, especially if you live somewhere that there isn't a hockey store. It sounds pretty silly if you live in a hockey nation, but there is plenty of places that have rinks and can, uh, have people that want to play hockey, but have no stores to be able to go get fitted in hockey skates, which means they have to buy online. So that's a little bit tricky, and of course, I will mention what you can do there. But if you're somebody that is just replacing a pair of skates, it's a much better position to be in because you already know what your skate size is. Of course, the fit in terms of volume and width of the skate has changed, which we'll cover in this video, but it means that you know your size and perhaps you already have a good indication of what you like, so that might make the buying process a little bit easier. So when we look at it from the perspective of first time buying a pair of skates and you don't know what you need to pick up or what you do or how you find your skate size, there's a lot of ways that you can do this. A lot of hockey stores, like for example, Puck Stop in the UK, shameless plug, they'll have a, we'll have a link down below to their store down below. They have a chart that converts your foot length in millimeters into skate sizes, which is very, very useful for people buying essentially blind, I'll call it. Now, what this means is that you simply step on a piece of paper, trace out your foot, and then measure it from the longest points to see what that length is, go on the website, and then you can convert it from millimeters into a skate size, making it nice and easy for you to figure out what skate size you need to be looking at. Another way that you can do this is a general rule of thumb of going a size or a size and a half smaller than your street shoe size. That's obviously, of course not gonna be as accurate, but it's just another way that you can do it if you don't have a choice. If you've already got a pair of skates and your feet have stopped growing, that's a good position to be in because you don't have to do this, you already know what your skate size is. I will mention that there is a lot of videos that are out there on the internet and also one that I filmed very many years ago that I'll link down below that shows you how to gauge 
the size of your foot and also the width of your foot. But essentially what I meant by the width and volume of a skate sizing or, or the skate sizing process in general has changed is over the last year or so, the top manufacturers that make skates, which is CCM and Bauer, have introduced a new fitting system in terms of the width and the volume for skates. Uh, the way this works is that previously the way that you did it was you figured out the length of your foot and then the width of your foot, which is two dimensions. But of course, our feet aren't pancakes, they're not flat, they're 3D. So the way you figured out the volume of your foot and which skate would be the best one for yourself was by trying the three different fit families that most manufacturers offered. The way that worked is each skate family had a different color. For example, Jet Speed being red, Rib Core being green, and these skates had different volumes inside the boot. So if you had a very narrow foot and your foot had less volume required, or for example, your, your forefoot area wasn't very high, it was quite low, quite traditional, you might be able to say, you might fit very well in a Jet Speed skate. But if you needed a little bit more volume, you might need to look at a Rib Core skate. So that's how the dimensions of your foot were figured out into which skate family would be the one for yourself. But the issue with this, if you were getting your skates fitted properly, it essentially meant that the player had no control if they were buying properly and they were going after comfort and fitness first, they had no control or say over which skate family they purchased. You might walk into a store and really want super tax, but then find out that that's that type of skate or that family of skates has a lot of volume inside it and your foot is requires much less volume. So even if you got a super tax in a size eight and a jet speed in a size eight, those skates would have different volumes. The internal space inside the skate would be different. Supertax would have more, jet speed would have less. This is the same with Bauer and their Vapor range and for example, their Nexus or Nexus range. Exactly the same story there. But because of this new fit system, that essentially means that now the player can decide which skate family that they want from each of the manufacturers based on the features of the skate or that particular range of family of skates has, or more importantly, the style of skater that that skate was optimized for. So the different families of skates with the way that they're optimized for different types of playing and skating is real and it does make a massive difference. And that's what this entire new system is. Bauer has the fit one, two, three, and from CCM, their new fit system is tapered, regular, and wide. So it really does depend on what type of skater you are and what the skate is optimized for on the ice. And that really does affect the way it feels and performs on the ice for each player. It doesn't matter how experienced or not you are, it's something that you can feel in one way or another. So from there, we're gonna be moving on to the point of stiffness. This is probably gonna be the point out of the five that I think is the most missed, you could say. Like when people are purchasing skates, I feel like it's the one that the majority of people do miss the mark on. Now, what I mean by this is skates have different stiffnesses. And while this sounds like it might be something, again, a bit of marketing, it's not. It's absolutely something that you can feel. Now, when you go from a entry level skate or a cheaper skate and you work your way up to a elite level skate or a more expensive skate, what changes along that line as you increase the amount you spend on the skate is gonna be the materials that the skate is made from, it's gonna be the features that the skate has, and more importantly, it's gonna be the stiffness of the skate, which of course can be tied to the materials that it's made from. Now, what I mean by this being an important point is if you are a less experienced skater or player, somebody that is still learning and developing the basic skills, or even slightly more advanced skills, going for a skate that is stiffer than you need will actually inhibit and restrict your development on the ice. A stiffer skate requires a particular type of player that knows what they're doing or perhaps a more built player that is able to get the skate to react the way it needs to. You have to be in a pair of skates that offer the right level of support for your requirements, your needs, and of course, your ability on the ice. You could again break it down into categories. The three categories of players that need stiff skates is gonna be somebody that is an advanced player. The next one is gonna be somebody that is big and heavy and built. And the next one from there, which could be tied into being an advanced player, is gonna be the amount of time you spend on the ice. Now, what this means is that if you are a novice, you're just getting into hockey for the first time, you're learning all of the basics, if you get a pair of top end skates, you're gonna to struggle to learn how to use them properly. It doesn't make sense. You don't know how to flex the boot properly. You need to go for something that is better suited for your ability and your level. But at the same time, if you are a novice and you're just learning the basics, but you are incredibly built, you're incredibly heavy, how going for an entry level pair of skates or in a middle, like a mid-range pair of skates, for example, might not be optimal because of your build. The skate needs to be able to support your build, your weight, as well as it being able to complement your ability on the ice. So in other words, if you are a beginner, you're built, you're heavy, and you're gonna be spending maybe three, four days on the ice during a week, you may need to go for a top spec pair of skates just based on the requirements that you have because of your build and how often you're on the ice. But of course, in a similar fashion, if you are a, quite a light player, like for example, like myself, I don't consider myself to be too heavy, and you're 
just getting started, you could really benefit from going for a pair of skates that is not only going to be softer and more forgiving, which will allow you to build your skills quicker, but it also means you're going to be spending a lot less. So making sure that you pick up the right pair of skates for your ability on the ice is super important. Of course, before we leave this topic, I will mention that I filmed a video explaining the difference of cheap and expensive skates or entry level to elite level, talking about exactly what changes as you move up in price. That will be linked down below if you want to check that out. From there, that leads us really nicely onto price. Now, this seems like a pretty obvious one, but it really ties nicely into the previous point, which is if you're going into a store to pick up a pair of skates, maybe you're completely new, or maybe you've been away from the game for 10, 15 years and you're coming back, you don't want to be blindsided by a price that you didn't expect to have to pay. Now, if you're going into a store expecting to pay 200, maybe 200 pounds or $200, but after you speak to the person in the store, there's a bit of a back and forth, they're figuring out what you need, you might find because of your build, the amount of time you intend to spend on the ice, they might suggest that you spend two, three times more money than you were ever expecting to spend. It's why I wanted to make this video because when we get asked the question of which skates should I get, it's a question that needs to have dialogue, they needs to be back and forth. I have to ask you questions and figure out what your needs are before I can recommend or suggest a pair. So by creating this video, hopefully nobody is going to walk into a store and be blindsided by the price of the skates that they need to get based on their ability. Now next up is going to be options in terms of the different skate families that are out there from the two biggest manufacturers which is CCM and Bauer. When you're looking at the options that are out there you have the jet speed, you have the super tax, you have the rib core. Now what is the difference between these families? How does that affect me on the ice? This point again ties a little bit into the previous one which is going to be the performance benefits of that skate. It's going to be how stiff that particular skate is because the different families of skates actually have different stiffnesses with CCM super tax being the stiffest, jet speed being second and rib core being the most forgiving. That's us looking at all of the top spec skates from these manufacturers. Now with the different ranges or families of skates that are available from the different manufacturers, it's about trying to figure out what type of a skater you are, what you want the skate to be able to do for you on the ice. We have created videos where we VS all of the top spec skates from CCM against each other to explain how each performs and of course what type of player is testing them so you can essentially figure out if that player has a similar skating and playing style to yourself then maybe you can go with their recommendation versus just trying to kind of like buy blind. So those videos will be linked down below. We've done it with CCM and we've also done it with Bauer. In terms of CCM it's the AS3 Pros against the FT4 Pros against the 100k Pros and with Bauer it's the Hyperlites against the Ultrasonics. All of those videos will be linked down below to break that down but I will mention that there is a big difference in the way that each of the families of skates perform on the Ice. Of course now because of the new fit systems from Bauer which is the 123 fit system and from CCM it's the tapered regular and wide fitting system you can essentially get any of the skates from any manufacturer in the same fit because you know the, the days of a skate having a different volume to a different family of skates that doesn't exist anymore which makes things nice and easy. Now it breaks down to which skate is optimized for the skating style that you have and perhaps which skate has the performance benefits that you like. And of course, which one looks the best or the favorite of, out of all of the or choices that you have. Let's not pretend like that's not a real thing. But the most important point about this particular section is that there is a difference, especially because for example, right now I'm skating in the ultrasonic skates from Bauer, the Supreme family, and I really wanted to be in the Vapors, which right now the top spec is the Hyperlites. That's what I wanted because of the way they looked, because of the performance benefits, all of that good stuff. That's what I wanted to have on my feet. But after putting them onto the ice, even really trying to break them in, it just wasn't working. They didn't feel natural. I was constantly thinking about what the skates felt like and what they were doing and the fact that I had to work harder to get them to do what I wanted them to do. And when I moved over onto the Ultrasonics, there was no break-in period. Even though they were both brand new, the Ultrasonics, I put them on and off I went. That same day that I got those skates, I played in a scrimmage. I didn't think about my skates once. With the Hyperlites, I put them on when I had the rink to myself, skated about, and all I could think about was my skates. Even when I put them on during a scrimmage, it was a nightmare. I had a horrible time because I couldn't stop thinking about those skates. And that's not because there was an issue with the skates, it's because that particular style of skate did not fit my skating style. So going through the different families and understanding which one is optimized for what type of player is super important. And I'll link those videos down below so you can watch them and try and figure out which skate is going to be the one for you. Now this brings us on to the fifth and final point which is going to be the blades or the runners and understanding how that can impact your performance on the ice. I feel for a very long time a lot of manufacturers weren't really making runners or blades that were worthwhile and this isn't a stab at one particular manufacturer, it's pretty much all of them. That's when you always had to relay to 
companies or manufacturers that are out there that specifically made runners or blades. It's, I feel like it's the same thing with bags. When you have a company that obviously is focusing on making hockey equipment that we use on the ice, but then they dabble in making bags and other accessories, they don't always hit the nail on the head. Sometimes they can miss the mark because it's not their focus. When you go to companies that specifically make bags, you get great bags. Or when you go to companies that make runners in like that is what they do that's their bread and butter they make great runners of course we think of companies like blade tech step steel and this is why step steel and ccm are now one because step steel are one of the best blade manufacturers on the planet it makes sense for them to be partnered up with a skate manufacturer so it is something that is very important you have to remember that the blade is what connects the boot to the ice it's like having a race car with bad tires anyone out there that says blades or runners don't matter that's like saying the tires on a race car don't matter they absolutely make a difference and it's exactly Exactly the same with the blades that you put on your skates. We filmed countless videos taking a look at a variation of different blades from different companies out there. I feel like in terms of the blades that are the most worthwhile at the moment, of course, is going to be Blade Tech number one because I'm a massive fan and everyone that you see on this channel was also a massive fan of Blade Tech. From there, it's going to be Step Steel as well. I think they make absolutely phenomenal runners as well, but I find that the height is just a little bit too much for myself. But in terms of the quality of the blade, it is incredible. So that's looking at one independent company that makes runners, and of course that's looking at blades from a company that is a skate manufacturer as well, because Step Steel and CCM are now one. Now looking at what Bauer offer, I feel like the most worthwhile runners that Bauer offer that are, again, a really good set of blades is gonna be the Pulse TI blades. But the point of this section is to highlight that the blade can really affect the way that you feel on the ice. So it's important to have perhaps one of the runners that I've recommended, depending on which skates you have, so you know that you have a quality bit of steel underneath your feet. In addition to this, of course, things like radius of hollow, so sharpening, that can really affect your performance depending on your build, the ice conditions, what you prefer. All of that I'll link down below in the video description if you want to watch a guide on skate sharpening so you can understand what type of hollow or sharpen will be good for what type of player under what type of ice conditions because the conditions of the ice do dictate what sharpen you should have and it does make a big difference. I'll also include a video down below on something called profiling which is a completely different element and it's something that again I don't feel is utilized in a lot of different nations that have rinks, have shops but might not offer profiling. So there'll be a video down below in the video description for you to watch about sharpening and also profiling. As always guys, a big thank you for watching the video all the way to the end. I hope that we've kind of hit everything on the head so you've got a solid bit of information to be able to create a foundation for you to walk into a store and to kind of confidently look at the different ranges and know a little bit about all of them and what you need to do and hopefully helping you to make a decision on what skates you need to pick up, whether you can go to a store or whether you're buying online. As always, please remember to subscribe to help the channel grow. Make sure you thumbs up the video, leave any comments that you have, uh, any questions you want us to answer or any video suggestions you'd like to see down below and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care and thanks for watching.